Hello everyone and welcome back to the Brain Boost channel. So today we're going to be talking about Mendelian genetics. We're going to go over a couple examples and some modern additions to the Mendelian genetic theories. So let's just jump right in. So let's just go over a little bit about Gregor Mendel. So he is known as the father of genetics. He discussed something called hereditary factors. Um, when he was bringing up his theories, because at the time genes weren't really a thing. This is, keep in mind, this is uh, in the 1800s, mid-1800s, I want to say. Uh, so he just termed the, whatever he was observing as hereditary factors. And uh, Mendel's work was actually ahead of its time, obviously, because it was in the mid-1800s, and he was definitely met with very much backlash. But we'll just get into what his theories were, so let's just dive right into that. So, let's look at Mendelian genetics and inheritance. So before we actually just get into our examples and get into all the theory, we need to lay some groundwork in terms of definitions. So, some genes have a variety of different forms, okay? Um, which can be lo located at the same position or the genetic locus. So when you hear locus, you want to think position, okay? Um, and this is on a chromosome. So on your chromosome, you can have a variety of a gene on the same locus, on the same position, and this is known as an allele. So just layman's terms, allele is a variant form of a gene, okay? It's on the on a locus of a chromosome, on a certain position on a chromosome. So an example could be a white allele and purple allele in this classic example, the purple and white flowers. So you might have seen this in class. Uh, so we're going to work with this example um, because in case you didn't understand it in your classroom, this example will be good to cover here so that we can help you understand what's going on. So. Um, we said we can have a white allele, purple allele in this example here. Uh, another thing I want to draw, another point I want you guys to have drilled into your brains is that all organisms are going to inherit two copies of a gene. Uh, they could be different or identical. Um, and you get one from your father, quote unquote, and one from the mother. So each copy is called an allele, right? You can get a white allele or purple allele. If they're different, you can get a white allele and a white allele, purple allele, purple allele. We're going to get into all of that. Okay, so let's get into the law of uniformity of hybrids of the first generation. That's actually what the, title, the law is called. It's a little bit extended, so I just shortened it here. Law of uniformity of hybrids. Um, you'll see here, first generation. We'll get into what this stuff means in a second. But basically, what we're saying here is, if you have a truly bred parent, so to speak, so a fully purple father, quote-unquote, and a fully white, in this example, mother, quote-unquote, you will have this essential result here. So, um, basically, our question is, are we seeing different alleles on a locus? Yes, purple and white, right? Our true breeding parents have different alleles. This has a purple allele on the locus, on the position, and this has a white allele on the locus, or on the position of the chromosome. So what happens is the first generation, their offspring, is going to basically have the appearance of whoever is dominant. So the dominant is going to take over the recessive. So in this case, the father, so to speak, is purple. He's truly purple. And his allele or gene is dominant. So he's going to pass that on. Maybe I shouldn't use uh, gender. So the dominant allele will be passed on. Um, in terms of appearance. So this dominant allele is going to be what shows here. Um, the white allele, the 
per, uh, the purple alleles passed on in the white allele here will not be shown because it is recessive. So they're going to pass on their genes, but this is still going to look purple the first generation. This hybrid, even though it's a hybrid, it looks purple because it was given a dominant allele that was purple. Okay, The recessive one is not going to really have much of an effect here in terms of appearance. So let's get into the law of segregation, which is another law relating to Mendelian genetics. And what this is saying is it just refers to the fact that all cells of an individual are diploid, right? You have two copies of chromosomes, uh, which is why we say that they are homo homologous pairs of chromosomes. And what we're going to see here is that through meiosis, um, which is, you know, formation of gametes, and uh, that is involved in the process of mating and forming offspring. Um, you're going to see um, a pool of different alleles and how they interact with other ones, so we're going to get into that. We're going to get into all of that. So, the two alleles in a heritable trait will segregate during the formation of gametes. So, we're going to say this is a true bred father, purple, true bred white, right? So we're going to say it's big P, big P, because it is true bred. There is no, um, it's not a hybrid of any sort. So big P, big P, little P, little P, right? So our gametes here, they're going to segregate. You're going to get a big P and a little P, and they're going to form the first generation, the F1. And that is going to be big P, little p. And we said previously that because big P is dominant, this is going to turn out purple, right? It's going to appear purple. Now, if we look at its gametes, it has a big P and a little p. It's half, half purple, so to speak, half white. Even though it's not really showing it here, it's showing purple only. But in its genes, it has a purple allele and a white allele. So let's split this up here. So basically, um, if we're going to mate it, it's gonna, we're going to take its sperm, big P, little p, and let's mate it with a, an egg that's big P, little p here. Our F2 generation, we have different options. We have different combinations that we can see here. We can see a big P with a big P, which is very dominant, okay? Um, it's, homo it's homozygous. It's known as homozygous dominant here because they're the same. Homo meaning the same. So it's going to be purple, obviously. Then you're going to see li big P, little p here, which is called heterozygous because they're two different alleles. But it's still going to be purple because big P, we said, was dominant. Then we can look here. Another big P, little p. Once again, purple, just like this one. This one's going to be purple because the big P here is dominant. And then the little p and the little p, okay, those are two recessives. So it's homozygous recessive for the little p, and it's going to be white. So you have three purples and one white. And this is our F2 generation. So let's look at more additions to Mendelian laws. So this is going to be incomplete dominance. So basically what we have here is our P generation, our parents, our true bred parents, right? Big R, big R, red flower. Little R, little R, white flower. Uh, in the other example, we said, oh, well, if this is dominant and this is recessive, we're going to see it's going to be red. But when it's incomplete dominance, the F1 generation, you get a combination of it. You get pink. Big R, little r, the, home, the heterozygote, sorry, is going to be pink instead of red, like in the other example where it is dominant. This is incomplete dominance. It's not fully dominant. So you get an in-between, pink. Uh, another addition to Mendelian laws is called co-dominance. So um, here we have a blue bird, here we have a white bird, um, and this is going to be big B, big B, right? This is homozygous dominant, and this is homozygous dominant as well for white. And when they mate, you get big B, uh, big W, right? 
Um, and because you get a mixture, because you're getting a B and a W here, um, what happens here in codominance is that they're both being expressed, right? So you see blue and white. You're going to see in between here. Um, so in the original example, when it's just straight up dominance, if this was the case, if this was dominant over the white, this would be blue, right? And if this was incomplete, the blue and the white would make like a lighter blue, like an in-between, like a, maybe like a teal, a dusty blue, whatever color. But because this is codominant here in this codominant example, it's in between. It's going to, it's going to be a little bit of white, a little bit of blue. This is codominance. So that's the end of this video. Make sure to like this video, comment any questions that you have, uh, comment any other video ideas that you'd like to see, and subscribe to our channel.